for viewers that don't know what you do and why you're an expert in this area, fill, fill them in. Well, I'm an oral and maxillofacial pathologist. And what that is, is basically an expert with mouth cancer. American smokers and the American public has been misinformed about the risks of smokeless tobacco use with respect to a variety of diseases. So I started to do research and I found that smokeless tobacco is in essence 98% safer than smoking. And I started to publish, do research, investigate that perspective so that we could provide safer options for smokers. Now, how did your colleagues react to that? Well, I had a lot of um, immediate and very severe reaction. There was tremendous pushback. At the time, I had been conducting a clinical trial of switching smokers to smokeless tobacco products. And that trial was published in the American Journal of Medicine in 1998. So it was a, it was a very good trial. The National Cancer Institute claimed it was unethical in order to pressure the university and me to stop doing it. Now, did you? Uh, no, I'm still doing it today. When you say that you know smokeless tobacco is 98% safer than, than smoking, that sounds so remarkably similar to our 95%, vaping is 95% safer than smoking. I would have preferred that that number be less precise mm. from a standpoint of a, more of a ballpark number rather than a precise specific number. It seems to me that when interviewing scientists involved in this issue that that 95 percent number when it comes to vaping is almost like a stake in the ground because there is seem to be a public uh, a civil war within public health and that number is the actual delineating mark. Either you believe that it's maybe even conservative uh, and it's much safer than that even uh, or you or you don't believe the number at all and you think they're much, much, much uh, more harmful. To be clear, I consider vaping to be vastly safer than smoking. Um, but as someone who has based his, uh, his position on tobacco harm reduction on epidemiologic research, and the risks are largely tied to epidemiologic research, uh, I'm, I'm a little reluctant to be precise with the specific number. But for a smoker who can't quit, there's no question that vaping is an, is an, should be an automatic option. Smokers don't believe that smoking is an illness, and neither do I. So they don't need to have a treatment that's designed and administered to them by doctors for a behavior that they consider to be normal. So public health considers smoking to be a disease. Absolutely. And they look the for- Tobacco industry's a vector, and they have the solution, which are any one of a number of behavioral or medications, and the outcome is always tobacco abstinence. That's the clinical trial model that medicine insists on instituting over smokers. For those out there that are not vapors, maybe they're smokers and they're considering it, or for those who have family members that are smokers, is this really a, a miraculous technology that could save hundreds of millions of lives if fully deployed? Is this real? Well, I think it is real, and I think that brings up a great point that the war on vaping is two-pronged. One is to collect a lot of science that would tend to be rather negative. But the other is the more public war to use reports and misuse reports to give uh, vapors and smokers who would be potential vapors the misinformation about vaping so that uptake is, is minimal. Uh, this is the kind of war that I've documented for at least 35 years against smokeless tobacco. And they're using a lot of the same strategy and a lot of the same techniques to misinform smokers now about vaping products. 2015 was the first time ever that more people thought vaping was as harmful or more harmful than smoking. And there's only one thing that could drive that, and that is some form of scientific opinion being pushed out to the public. Because otherwise, how else would they come to that form that opinion? Well, exactly, and so so much of the misinformation uh, from tobacco control uh, advocates, they've been blaming the tobacco industry 
for any forms of misinformation that smokers have suffered. Now are we going to blame the vapor industry for people thinking that vapor is more and more dangerous? It has to be the public health community that's responsible for that gross amount of misinformation. Do people misunderstand science, even people with inside of it? They, they look at it as a very hard uh, uh, search for the truth when it's really a bit more malleable than that? It sounds malleable. It definitely is. Uh, there is no, there is no uh, absolute truth. There's only our attempt to find uh, truthful and useful uh, knowledge. How can we be confident that the Food and Drug Administration is going to give pro-vaping science a fair hearing? Like that? I, I don't think it's going to give pro-vaping science a fair chance. You don't think? No, I, I just don't think there's enough of it. Who could? Who in American universities? that's relatively pro-vaping is going to get funded by one of the federal agencies. I don't think it's going to happen very, very uh, often. I think there's going to be a deficit of, of uh, investigators that are oriented either toward vaping or have an open mind. The amount of money uh, that, has been, that has been earmarked for NIH research in tobacco issues is enormous. And it, I think the, the large percentage of grants will be uh, anti-tobacco, and that includes anti-e-cigarettes. And so I think we're in for a torrent of research that will be very, very negative. So that begs a question for me then, is that I always thought science was devoid of oh. going in with a, with a preconceived notion? No, there's no question. There's no question. All science is biased. And you know, in the end, science is self-correcting, uh, but it sometimes takes years or decades, and we don't have that kind of time for the current vaping community. We don't have years and decades for this science to be, to be uh, corrected. You don't sound hopeful. You know, with all, with all of the positive developments with respect to vaping and tobacco harm reduction, vapors would have to get the truth about the products. And I'm not so sure, given the amount of misinformation, that they will ever get the truth. Vaping has energized the, the idea of tobacco harm reduction, but in being such an effective alternative, potential alternative, it's also mobilized an enormous opposition. And that's where I'm pessimistic, because I don't see that opposition. Um, I see them gaining momentum at the moment. And I, and I worry that, that uh, vaping will either be destroyed or forced underground, or perhaps both.